All right, welcome. This is Unit Two Study Guide, and uh, let's go over our uh, properties here. Here we go. Um, number one, we're replacing n with n equals three, um, so that three gets replaced by n. So that's our substitution property. There we go. Uh, sorry, I already filled it out. Um, two, we're going from a to negative five, so I'm just multiplying both sides by two. Um, so that's multiplication property. Over here, it's the same thing, but just switched around. So that is my symmetric property, H. Here, I'm adding one to both sides. So I'm talking about addition property. All these should say of equality. I just ran out of room over here on the side. Um, number five, AB equals C. C equals D squared. AB equals C squared. This is transitive property. Now, I want to make mention that this and this kind of look similar. That's because transitive property is a form of substitution. The difference is here, I'm saying n equals three, and I'm just taking a part of the equation out and putting something else in. I'm not doing like a whole rechange. So think of like substitutions, like taking the quarterback out, putting a new quarterback in, but the rest of the team stays the same. Here, I'm taking out like the whole team and replacing it with a whole new team, right? So like the Chargers are the same as the 49ers, the 49ers are the same as the, uh, uh, the Chiefs, so thus the Chargers and the Chiefs are the same team. So I'm like taking the whole team out, not just replacing one thing. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Uh, G, 6y equals 6y, that's reflexive property. Um, they're equal to each other. And D, negative 8 and negative 8, uh, we divide. Um, and we get Q equals 7, so that's division property, D. Uh, here we're just adding... Uh, or it looks like we're subtracting, I'm sorry, a negative or one from both sides, so that's subtraction property. And then last but not least, distributive property. Okay, um, here's the answer to the front page. You might notice that these somewhat look familiar if they didn't because they were on our first study guide. Uh, in fact, the, the, the study guide is kind of a somewhat repeat of the last study guide uh, for very good reason. One, we need to be consistently good at this but also to recognize we do have some of our definitions in here. So um, again, I'm not gonna go through all these answers because a lot of them are repeats from the study guide on unit one. So you can go back and see those. But again, we wanna draw our pictures. We wanna think about what we're trying to accomplish in setting up our equations. Uh, I still want them all done. Um, if you feel like you nailed it the first time, then look at your whole study guide and they're all there. Um, but yes, a lot of repetition on that. Um, so I'm actually gonna turn over uh, to our proofs so we can hit up our proofs because those are new to us. So I'm jumping all the way to 26. Most of the other ones are pretty familiar uh, territories. So I'm gonna leave those up to you. If you do have questions, we can go over them in class. So here we go. All right, so it's an algebraic proof. There's no thinking to be done here um, as far as what am I gonna do? All the algebra is done for me, so I'm just going to go step by step from one step to the next. I'm starting with my given, and I say, how do I go from here to here? Well, usually you want to get your x's to the same spot, so I'm looking here and here. It looks like I'm subtracting 6x. I recommend writing down what you're doing on this side, so then this makes it easier, but that should be subtraction property of equality. And then from this step to this step, it looks like we're moving the 17 over. So that's addition property of equality. And then from here to here, we're dividing by two on both sides. I didn't write the plus 17. Um, so that's division property of equality. And then last but not least, I'm saying 12 equals x and I'm flipping it to x equals 12. That is symmetric property, not to be confused with our All right, now we get into the goods. Okay, so for this proof right here, what we wanna do is we wanna actually label our picture and try and get some understanding. So it says WY, um, which I'm gonna just kind of color in blue. This piece right here is equal to this piece right here. And we wanna prove uh, that WX and YZ are congruent. Well. What's going to happen is I kind of have a feeling we're going to do segment addition postulate here. Uh, if I say this plus this 
equals this plus this, then we can subtract the middle out and get this. So I'm thinking, my brain's thinking, um, this is gonna be segment addition postulate. I have a feeling that's gonna be showing up. I'm gonna be doing some subtracting, all that good stuff. So that's kind of what I wanna to, what I want to focus on as I'm doing this, because if I can subtract that middle piece out that they both share, then they should be congruent. So let's go ahead and get started. So I first start with my given statement. Okay, from here to here, it's the exact same statement. I'm just going from congruent to equal. So that should be definition of congruency or congruent. I like to use the symbol. All right, next. So here's where I, I kind of like saw myself going. Wx plus um, xz, okay, equals wz. So we're doing the whole thing. Good. And then wy plus yz equals wz. So those are both segment addition postulate. All right, little piece plus little piece equals big piece. Okay, now we have xz. Okay, uh, xz plus yz equals wz. So I'm kind of lost on where this came from, so that's where I'm going to start busting out my highlighter here. Um, so I'm just going to see anything that repeats itself. wx plus xz. Um, I don't see a repetition of that. So let's see if we can see if we find anything else. I see wz 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 okay like slowly making it there and then we got what is this in green wy plus yz okay so then we have this statement here so i'm kind of curious this is very similar to here it looks like I might just be replacing uh, one of my values with something else. And that's kind of what I, I'm starting to see here is that I don't see transitive property happening uh, because if I would, one of these would switch out. But what I do see is that this statement right here kind of looks the same, but then that one piece is different. So what happens is it looks like I took wy and I replace it with xz, and we can see that right here, wy equals xz. So this looks like basic substitution property. So um, sometimes it takes a second to kind of figure that out. Yeah, that's basic substitution property. Okay, now, now that we got substitution property, we can see that this equals wz, this equals wz, this equals wz. So any of these three I can set equal to each other. And so um, this kind of became its own new thing, which I'm going to kind of redo in yellow. And that's going to be um, right there. All right, so yellow equals pink. And then WX plus XZ, there's my blue. So there's my transit property. So I did a little substitution, took one of those, replaced it right there. And then this is transitive property. Remember, substitution really just replaces one item and transit, we can replace the whole equation. All right, next, I go from here to here. That's because I'm probably just canceling out the xz, so that's subtraction of equality. And then I go from equal to congruent, so that's definition of congruent. Okay, so that was a little tricky. We had to be careful. Again, highlighter is super helpful for us as we're working through this. All right, uh, next one, km bisects jkl. Okay, so if KM is bisecting JKL, I already know that these two angles are congruent. And then it says MKL is half of JKL. Well, uh, that kind of makes sense because if this was 10, that has to be 10, which means the whole thing is 20 and 10 is half of 20. So if that makes sense to me, let's, let's dive in. Um, I'm probably gonna use some maybe angle addition postulate, um, which I read right there, um, but let's go jump in. KM bisects JKM. JKL, sorry, that's given. And then JKM, JKM, is equal to MKL. Again, I'll, 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 real quick, one second, I'm going to pause. Okay, well, I was going to pause it, but the guy's just sitting right outside my room with the, with the loud machine, so we're just going to keep going. All right, so JKM is this piece, MKL is this piece right here. 
Um, and basically, how do I know that? Well, you just told me it bisected. This must be definition of angle bisector. That can be my only logical conclusion here. Now it's saying angle just possible, so I just have to show that the angles add up. So the measure of JKM plus the measure of MKL should equal the full measure of JKL. Okay. Now here we see that I'm basically it looks the exact same. I'm just kind of replacing these two with each other. So that's basic substitution. There they go. I'm just going to power through. Now it says combine like terms. Well, if I have MKL and I have MKL, that should just become two measure of MKL. And then um, here, I won't somehow I have two MKO, now I only have one, and now I have half, so I'm probably dividing by two. So that's going to be division property of equality. Okay? All right. One more. And this one is just a straight-up algebra. So what I typically would recommend to do is just write the answer and the statement, and then try and take this step-by-step step, um, in your head. Make sure we get there. So I do the algebra first, then I go back. So I'm first going to distribute sets so 8x minus 8 equals 5x minus 35. I like to move the variable first. I'm going to subtract the 5x. Now if it helps, you can just write the answer as you're going, like given. And I just said distribute, so that's going to be distribute, our distributive property. I just said I'm going to subtract the 5x. So subtraction property. And then here I'm going to add the 8 um, for that one. So it's just going to be addition property. And I'm going to just double check that. That's 27. And so that was addition property because I added positive 8. And then I'm going to divide. And that does work for us. All right, factor time. All right, here we go. So when we come to factoring, well, we want to set up our x factoring for pretty much all of these. Uh, the only difference is we want to make sure that we're in this form where we have an a value in front of the x squared term. Then we can jump right into here. So that's 120 over negative 22. This one is not in that form. So I want to go ahead and divide out my common factor. And so that's going to go in my final answer down here, so the 2 is going to go in my final answer. So I'm going to get x squared plus 14x plus 45. Now I can x factor 45 and 14. This one right here, <coughs> again, I don't want to factor unless that's normal, so I'm going to go ahead and divide this by 3. That will again go in my final answer, but I should get x squared minus, and then 108 divided by 3. I don't know why they're just sitting right outside my classroom, but there it is. This one's interesting because the top number is the back number, which is 36, negative, but the bottom number is the x term. There is no x term, so it's just 0. So we'll come back to that one. That one's styling. It's ready to go, negative 126 and 3. This one's ready to go. We get negative 121. There is no x value, so it's 0. Now this one's interesting. It doesn't have an a value, but it does have an extra x. So I'm actually pull that x out. That's going to go in my final answer. So I get x squared minus 6x minus 72, and now I'm finally ready. Okay, so lots of factoring. So take a second, pause, try to set these up now, and we'll go through them. Okay, ready, steady, go. All right, perfect, hopefully you pause. All right, so let's start up here, 120 and negative 22. Okay, well, this one's tricky because I have a negative sign here, but that's positive. The only way that's ever going to work is to add to a negative multiply to a positive because I have two negative values. So I take out my calculator and I start dividing by some numbers. Now if I know I divided by 2, it's probably not going to work so good. So I'm going to try dividing by 20. 20 and 6. Those will not make 22. So let's keep going. Uh, let's try 10 just because it seems easy. 10 and 12. Guess what? That would make 22. Um, so I'm going to get a negative 10, negative 12, and then guess what? You're done. Okay, so I just kind of find my factors by just going through one at a time. I'm going to go down this list right here. Now, this one's my favorite. Whenever you have a zero on the bottom, you know it's going to be 
the same number, one's positive, one's negative. It's the only way you're going to get anything to go to zero. And so you got to ask yourself, what two numbers multiply 36? Well, it's a perfect square, so it's positive 6, negative 6. So you just get, um, in this one, x minus 6, x plus 6. But remember, we did factor a 3 out earlier, so we have to keep that 3 as part of my factored answer. Uh, this one, same thing. We know the two numbers are going to be the same. I got 121. Um, you could always just take the square root of 121, that will give you two equal factors, which is 11 and positive 11. Nothing else to factor here. So we are done. All right, next side. I did factor that 2 out already, so I got 45 and 14. So let's go through the different things for 45. They're both positive, so I know it's just probably going to add. I'm going to try 5 first. I get 5 and 9. That happened to be the right answer. Um, 5 times 9, 5 plus 9 is 14, so we get x plus 5, x plus 9, and again, I did factor 2 out in the beginning, so I left that. All right, negative 126 and 3, well, I know that that's negative and that's positive, so I know one's going to be negative, one's going to be positive, and so i got to just start dividing 126 by numbers. Now, since this number is pretty small, I'm thinking the numbers are going to be pretty close in size. So I'm not going to start with like 2 or anything like that. I'm going to start a little bigger. 8 doesn't work. Um, I'm going to try, I don't think 10 is going to work. Let's try 12. Not going to work. Um, I'm going to try 13. Nope. So again, sometimes it's just trial and error 14. See if that works. So I get 14 and 9. Okay, so 14 and 9 is pretty close. If I were to subtract those, I'd get 5. But I'm not quite there. So 126 divided by, let's try 16. Mm -mm. Let's try, uh, let's see, I didn't do 15, but I know that one's not going to work. 17, let's try 18. 18 and 7, we're getting close-ish. I think maybe I went too big. Let's try 9. Uh, oh, I already did 9. That's right. Okay, so we're just going to keep trying until we kind of get to the right um, value here that we can get. So I'm going to start listing them because sometimes when you start listing them, it kind of helps see the prog the progress. Did we try 8? Uh, yeah, 8 didn't work. Did we try 7? See, 7 and 18. Not quite making 3 for us. Um, let's try let's try 6 and 21. That's not helpful. Um, 126 and let's see... Ba -ba 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 -ba. 4? Nope, 126 and 3, 3 and 42. So I'm starting to run out of values here that I could potentially go into this. I'm going to try 12 again, nope, um, 13, I already know 14 works, but that's not going to work. So you just kind of got a process of elimination, and I'm starting to get the feeling that this is actually going to be not factorable. Yeah, unless I missed one completely, but I kind of went through pretty much the gamut. And I don't think we got this um, for this one, which is sometimes the case. Okay, let's try this next one: negative 72, negative 6. One's positive, one's negative. So I'm going to start dividing. It, but I'm going to go 9. I know 9 and 8 work, um, but we know that's not going to work there. Um, 72 divided by 6 and 12. That will work because if I get a negative 12 and a positive 6, that would cancel out. So I'm going to get x minus 12 and x plus 6. And I did factor an x out in the beginning, so there's my answer. All right, thank you, everybody.